Hello everyone, this is Jotto and welcome to Versus Series. Remember, my team, Ace Breakers, faces off against a well-known up-and-coming pro player. For this week, we have Zumwana from Ace Breakers, who's facing off against another Vega Squadron player, Fire. Interestingly enough, Fire, along with Jompy, used to be on Ace Breakers. There was a bit of a transition that went over on that side. In other news... I have not been able to do content this week. My internet has been completely fried. It was not fun. We had to change the entire modem and also providers. So as a result, I have not been able to upload anything. I got my internet connection back about two days ago. And since then, I've been trying to figure out new content, which I'll be doing up over the weekend. I'll be doing several videos over the weekend. And this is the first video for this week. But anyway. Without further ado, let's go on to the first game, shall we? Now, we will be using spectator mode for this. As, yeah, spectator mode known for being slightly buggy. As we do have the mulligan completely bugged here. On the other side of things, Sludge Belcher, Harrison, along with a uh, Gromash and an Acolyte. So there's a shield slam there now as well. Opening hands-wise, first of all, interesting to see a Paladin. This looks to be an aggro deck. There's some interesting Paladins roaming around right now. It's pretty strong class overall. Quartermaster has been driving a lot of these decks. But uh, at the moment, we're just seeing a aggro deck. Now, not playing out the Direwolf is actually subtle, but quite important because it stops the Fire of War Axe from getting absolutely insane amounts of value. Blood Knight, Blood Knight, that's an interesting, interesting addition to the deck there. So this is a Divine Shield variant, which makes sense with the Argent Protectors. So I would not be surprised if we have a Neutron on this deck. Shielded Minibot is the obvious addition. Even, now that you think about it, even things like Argent Squire. Uh, for this turn, by the way, I think you just play the Blood Knight. You just slam the Blood Knight and then go face with the rest of the stuff. This matchup should be favored. For the uh, the warrior, in theory. Okay, so he's going for the defender. All right, this makes sense actually. Going for the defender, which means that you can play around execute. Now you can play Blood Knight next turn if he doesn't pop the divine shield, and then it's a six six, and he doesn't have an easy execute out. Sludge Belcher, the aggro stop to end all aggro stops. The question is how to get around it. You could, let's see, there could be a Blood Knight into Direwolf Alpha actually doesn't do anything here. I mean, Consecrate is obviously a way of clearing it, but then you don't get your Blood Knight down. As here, we see Baron Geddon up in the top hand there, along with Shield Maiden, Sylvanas. Shield Slam, not fantastic, to be honest, as a hand. Pretty slow. The only relevant card in that hand right now is Death Bite and also the second Sludge Belcher. So we are seeing the Dire Wolf. Dire Wolf Alpha doesn't actually do much here. The trade is pretty much the same. The Blood Knight, however, is going to be an absolute stopper in this case. Now, what this does allow is killing the Sludge Belcher. And keeping a pretty good board. On the minor side of things, this is bad against Big Game Hunter. However, no Big Game Hunter is in sight. Instead, we have a Death Bite, and he takes 4 damage on that Death Bite. That's pretty brutal. Noble Sacrifice. Interesting addition. Have not seen Noble Sacrifice in a very long time. I think we just played the Knife Juggler and then the, uh, the Hero Power here. Interesting. Not Knife Juggler. I guess you could... You could think about playing around Brawl at this point. Whirlwind, that's going to be a nice pickup here. Because the Death Bite Whirlwind will clear the tutus. I think Shield Maiden is probably going to come down. Or Sludge Belcher. I think Sludge Belcher is slightly better. Because with Sludge Belcher, you block the entire board. Which is a plus. The question is, how do you get around this thing? The warrior is getting pretty low. 14 life is not fantastic. Muster for battle. Interesting with the knife juggler. The question is, how do you play this? I think... 
There's a couple ways around this. The first one is you could have quality consecrate and then deal seven straight up to the face. You explain knife juggler and then kill the three five, then muster. I don't agree with mustering first. I don't think this gains you anything. This muster has to hit perfectly for this to do anything. Well, not perfectly, but pretty close. As it completely misses the Belcher. I actually, I don't think that was a correct play. I mean, obviously, with that kind of RNG, it, it doesn't actually matter. But um, I think attacking the Belcher with the Blood Knight and then using Muster for battle would have given you much, much better odds of actually doing something. As a result, this board is an absolute dream for Baron Geddon. <laughs> Baron Geddon's going to come down here and is going to wipe the board clean. Absolutely clean. That is one of the best Baron Geddons I think I've seen in a very, very long time. Straight up kill everything. I will say, however, being on 7 life... Wait, Divine Favor? There's a Divine Favor! He's playing a Divine Favor Paladin. How much is this going to draw? What, four cards for three mana? That might be enough to just straight up end the game. Is he an Elder or Peacekeeper? Yeah, you don't Peacekeeper, this is no point. I think you just straight up play this uh, Knife Juggler and pass. This is a really hard situation for this warrior. He's going to have to use Shield Maiden because otherwise he's just going to die. I think you either play out the Anoratron or the Knife Juggler. Interesting, going for the Reinforce. Hmm. I'm not sure I would have gone for that. The reason for it is because Knife Juggler is only bad against weapons in this case. As you see, the Baron Geddon killed absolutely everything. But uh, Knife Juggler is only bad against the weapons. And in this case, not so relevant. I could actually see a call to Consecrating this, but I don't think he will. I want to save that for something else. Could Iron Beak Owl? Yeah, could Iron Beak Owl and then uh, Iron Beak Owl the one four to stop armor gain, and then just go for the hero power and just start going for the face. Start stripping away that armor a bit. Could also muster for battle here, but I think you want to save that with the knife juggler. So I, I don't like the muster for battle. I think just going for reinforce is fine. And then he's going to probably save this Anoratron and Knife Juggler. Saving the Anoratron is fine because you have the second Blood Knight in your hand. So I think on the warrior side of things, you can Whirlwind and Cruel Task the 3-3 uh, three, three, and then kill it with the Shield Maiden. And you also have enough mana to shield... Do you shield block? No, I think you just play Sylvanas. I think you just play Sylvanas. Yeah. Play Sylvanas, and then just try and get board position back. Unfortunately, this is an Equality Consecrate turn. And also Knife Juggler into Argent Protector. That is crazy. Stripping away all of the armor, dealing so much damage. And you get a knife juggler on the board with the Argent Protector. This has swung all the way back in the Paladin's favor. Turns out, the Warrior has better late game, but Divine Favor is the ultimate killer of control decks. That Divine Favor is what's keeping the Paladin in the game right now, and I think it's actually put him ahead. Dr. Boom, not going to do much in this situation. I think you just have to shield block it. I mean, <laughs> Dr. Boom would not block that much. He's only six off lethal. He gets the axe. I actually would probably shield slam that uh, knife juggler and kill it. He's not, though. Avenging Wrath. Whoa, he's actually... Wait, is that is that lethal? No, it's not. He's one off lethal. So what he can do is he can muster for battle. The triggers deal four damage total with the weapon. And then Avenging Wrath, that's ten. That's more than ten. That's 
like 12 from hand. Wow, he was actually one off lethal. Instead, we have a 9-9 Blood Knight. And he's going to shred all of this armor straight up. No shield slams are coming in here. No shield blocks left in the deck. There's one shield maiden, but there goes all of the armor. All of it is gone. Straight up, all of it is gone, and there's no Brawl in sight. There is, however, a Harrison Jones. He could draw it, but then if he plays Harrison Jones and gets Brawl, unless he top decks it, he does not top deck the Brawl. Let's see if he gets off this. That's a Whirlwind. That could be useful, but no Executes. Brawl is there. The problem is, if he Brawls, he has to, the Harrison has to live, otherwise the Avenging Wrath will kill him. All right, let's see. Let's see if this Blood Knight lives. That's just that's just a slap in the face if the Blood Knight lives. I mean, it actually doesn't matter as long as the Harrison dies. Oh, oh the Blood Knight lives. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the Blood Knight actually lived. I mean, it did not matter at all whether the Blood Knight lived there, just to point that out, because the Avenging Wrath would have completely killed him, and apparently he got level 30. As, yes, he was uh, borrowing Jompy's account for this particular match. But anyway, so game one, blisteringly fast, Paladin deck. As soon as it was about to run out of steam, that Divine Favor draw four cards for three mana, and the Equality Consecrate just completely swung that game. That was quite impressive from the Paladin uh, perspective there. Control Warrior, usually very, very strong, very secure opener. One of those decks which is usually on the forefront of being the strongest deck in the environment right now. There's a couple control decks that are very, very good because of the way they handle these resilient aggro decks, but that's one of the better ones. And it just got run over because Divine Favor literally says on it kill target control deck the card is designed to kill control decks and this is a divine favor paladin very very good opener because you're expecting control decks so what do you do you put double divine favor i assume it's double into a paladin and you just run over people but anyway it looks like we'll be going into game two so what is the response it is a mage i'm guessing this is mech mage you see Mulligans, Knife Juggler, Direwolf, Noble Sack. I think you actually keep that hand. Maybe send back the Direwolf. As we just get hands up on both ends of things. Spectator mode, a little buggy. So uh, take, a, take a couple of seconds here. So hopefully it does not run out of time. <laughs> Okay, so we actually sent back the Knife Juggler and the... Uh, he sent back those two drops. That was interesting. It looks like he's actually against a Control Mage. This is a risky, risky, risky uh, transition here for, for Fire, bringing in a Control deck. I think what he's doing at this point is thinking, I need to win two games in a row to win this series. How do I do that? The answer being... Control Mage probably has a higher chance. His third deck was Paladin, so I guess he didn't want to do. He didn't. I guess the Paladin Mirror Match is probably about as risky as uh, as this is. However, I don't think he trusts his Paladin deck as much as the Knife Juggler actually does kill that Zombie Chow. Not as critical as it looks because he could also hear a power. So yeah, that's pretty frisky. All right, this is a Divine Favor. There's nothing else to do here. Divine Favor for three. Cold Hammer was the first card drawn. If he drilled that before, he could have cold hammered and just messed up Fire's Tempo so badly. You see a Doomsayer come off the top here. That might be quite critical. We also have a Sludge Belcher, anti -Keel bot, uh Flame Strike, and Hand. Those are the relevant cards right now. I think we're just going to shield the Mini Bot and then Hero Power. Go from there. Duplicate comes off the top here. I think, yeah, Coin Sludge Vulture, you need an aggro stop. I've got a feeling this is getting silenced, though. Yeah, this is pretty... I think you just silence this thing. There aren't that many silence targets besides Doomsayer. So you run it, just get that off the board. Not to mention you have a quality Consecrate for future future kills. Alright, so yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna kill this off with the silence. 
and he actually gets it on the RMV cow. Joe DB cow representing my channel mascot, silencing and getting that taunt divine shield, the Sunwalker effect. Do see a duplicate come down here? That will be probably for the Cairn next turn, or even an anti kill bot. But the way this is playing out, he might trick his opponent into thinking that this might be uh, what's it called? Uh, ice block. So it's not mirror entity because he played the uh, the shield of mini bot. He hasn't played a spell yet, so he may play around counter spell a bit. Yeah, see the Karen come down here. I think you just ignore this Karen. There's no reason to go for it. Just ignore it. Go straight for the face. Divine favor. With how much does that draw? Only two. I'm not sure. I like divine favor here. It only draws two cards. That's not really worth it that much. I think you just go face with everything with the weapon as well because you might draw true silver. I would say you don't. I mean. If you don't Divine Favor, you don't do anything, but then if you do, you don't have the second Divine Favor for later on, because you already played one. So I think this is fine. Now, this does play into Flame Strike, however, there is a muster for battle in this hand. And Flame Strike can't clear this board, because of all the Divine Shields and the Taunt. Oh, we have Noble Sacrifice! That is huge! Noble Sacrifice is probably the best card he could have drawn there. Completely stops the Cairn. Absolutely destroys that Cairn. There's no way through that thing. Avenging Wrath also representing pretty close to lethal right now. As uh, we do have the Light's Justice weapon. We'll be dealing 4 damage. There's no AoE left. There is a Doomsayer and that is about it. Yep, he's going for this Doomsayer now, but it's too late. There's no way of clearing any of this. I think, yeah, he needed to play the anti heal bot there. What he's doing right now is just trying to bluff an Ice Block, but you can't really rely on bluffing Ice Block. So that's 5, 6. Yep, he's got lethal. He's got lethal no matter what. Now, what he's doing here... Yeah, he knows that if it's Ice Block, he's got lethal. If it's not Ice Block, he has lethal. So he's just checking, for, checking to see if it's duplicate, and it in fact is, and that is lethal. Straight up consecrate. I mean, Avenging Wrath is a bit risky. So yeah, you go for the consecrate here, and that is game number two. Now I'm pretty sure consecrate doesn't trigger Mad Scientist as well. If that's what he shouldn't. Yeah, it's just gonna straight go through it. So Zamwana picks up game number two in very fast games. Just over 15 minutes into the series. And Zamwana has already gone 2-0 up as we are heading into game number three. Now, the last deck Fire has access to is a Paladin deck. So if this is a mirror match, this is going to be incredibly quick. Paladin aggro mirror matches are very fast. Just to say they are extremely fast. They end in probably about six turns, seven turns maybe. And it's just straight cutthroat go for the face a lot of the time. And it's very, very snowball-y because of Argent Protector. So we'll have to see how this turns out. If it's a control of mid rangey Paladin, though, then this could be very, very different. Oh, as I appear to have gone into the wrong scene. In video editing, number like 782 at this point. But anyway, so it's going to game three. We see a Quartermaster get mulliganed there. So this, as he's heavily, Season 1 are heavily mulliganing for that Blood Knight. That makes sense, considering the uh, Divine Shields on both ends of the table. I would say both players have an incredibly strong hand. However, Zumwana's hand is absolutely insane. Both players have ridiculous hands here, but that Blood Knight, Coin Blood Knight, is going to completely wreck this field. Yeah, you go coin into Blood Knight, make a 6-6, six, six, and then you're fine. No, don't muster for battle. What? That doesn't make any sense. No, this muster for battle is going to wreck him now. Although I will say, fire did him I'm sorry, which means this is not going to kill all three. It just never does, if you say I'm sorry. Even though the chances of this killing all three are actually pretty good. 
So he's just going to level this board. That was... I don't know what Zamana was doing there. I do not know what he was doing. That was ridiculous. So he's playing out this blood knight because he kind of has to. I'm not even sure if I like that though because you can just hold on to it. Do you see true silver off the top? I think you just play the true silver here and just kill it. Because... I mean, it doesn't play around Consecrate, but then your opponent Consecrates your board, and then you play Loatheb, and then you can't really do anything because you have a Loatheb pract You have a Loatheb that is protected by a True Silver Champion. I'm not sure I like this move on Fire's perspective, because it does not play around Consecrate. It actually plays into Consecrate. Because this Consecrate is going to straight up kill multiple cards now. Yeah, I'm not sure I like that. I mean, you do get a little bit of extra value out of your Light's Justice, but it's not the biggest deal. Double Divine Favor of the draw here, that's pretty bad. As this Lotheb is just disgusting. Lotheb is one of those cards where if you're ahead, it just secures the win. This is... He can't even play anything. <laughs> there is no good play here. Reinforce and then just pass. That was a terrible turn. Knife juggler. See what he. So you're just gonna hero power and then uh, go from there. Playing out the truth over it. That's a bit risky because there could be some weapon destruction. Although it does present some sort of lethal next turn. No Consecrate, just a second to quality. I actually think you go for the Knife Juggler here. And then play Noble Sack. Wait, there's no way of this... No, that's lethal. There is no way past that. Consecrate and attack, does it? He should have attacked the Knife Juggler. Wow, that was really badly played. <laughs> That was one of the worst played games I think we've ever had on Versus Series. That was incredible. Well, I did say turn 6 or 7, and that was one of the fastest games I have ever seen. Straight up, like, 3 minute game. <laughs> what on earth happened there? Alright, so... Last week, we had Priest killing everything, and this week, we had Paladin winning every single game. The first two games were a case of Paladin deck with double divine favor, kills control X. that's what it's supposed to do, and that's what it's good at. The third game, I have no idea what actually happened. I've got a feeling as one I was just like, hey, I won the first two games and just started getting drunk or something and playing with one hand. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what happened in that last game. <laughs> that was really weird. Uh, yeah, the last game had a bunch of misplays on, uh, I mean, there was only one on Fireside, which was just the, the playing into Consecrate instead of True Silvering, but that was about it. But that, that was, that was a funny way of ending that series. But anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback, put it in the comment section below. The decks that were played will be in the description, or if you're watching us on Hearthbone, they'll be on one of the tabs. Uh, where the video is, there's two tabs, and that, or one tab, and that's uh, where the deck list will be. But anyway, as for now, this has been Jotto, signing off.